Welcome to Code Corner with Katie. on thinking man's mind today. Where are mag locks approved for use? Man, you, that's another great question. Let's go check it out. There are many misunderstandings of where mag locks can be used and what the requirements are. Here are just a couple of them. I thought that I could use a mag lock anywhere as long as it's tied to the fire alarm to release. <laughs> While fire alarm release is one of the criteria for using a mag lock, it isn't the only one. And this one, I thought that I could use a mag lock as long as I had a push button or a motion sensor to unlock the door. Once again, not true. So let's get into the facts about mag locks and their requirements. I will be basing my answer using references from IBC 2015 and based on new construction. Other additions are similar. Always consult your state and local codes as well. You will also want to look for any written amendments to the code as some jurisdictions will not allow for mag locks, even though the code says you can. We know that in the code, unless specifically permitted, doors have to, egress doors have to be readily openable from the egress side without a use of a key, special knowledge or effort. Mag locks, therefore, fall under the category of special locking arrangements. This situation came up at a doctor's office recently. In order to exit the exam area, I was told by the staff person to just push the button. There was no motion sensor, no sign, no instructions other than the verbal one from staff. I pushed the button and let go, turned the handle, and the door didn't unlock. They used a momentary contact switch, which I figured that they probably did, but it Regular non-door hardware nerd wouldn't know what to do. So I did the same thing a few times in a row, push the button, turn the handle, push the button, let go, turn the handle. Finally, the staff person said, push the button and hold down, turn the handle and you can get out. This is not a code compliance solution. Maglocks can be used there's a couple different categories. The first one is sensor release of electrically locked egress doors, and they can be used in a means of egress in buildings of different occupancy types, mainly any except for high hazard. And they need certain requirements, a sensor on the egress side, they need to be fail safe and drop on power. There's a push button that has a sign on it that says push to exit and unlocks the door for 30 seconds needs to be unlocked from the fire alarm or sprinkler system, whichever one is present, and the components UL-294 listed. Another way to use mag locks is hardware release of electrically locked egress. The same building occupancy types, but the hardware is on the door. It's obvious to use. You just push on the rail, operate it with one hand, and it cuts power directly to the mag lock. The mag lock is fail safe, and if you use a panic, it must also cut direct power to the mag lock, UL-294 listed. And the last way is using controlled egress, which applies to I-1 and I-2 hospitals, nursing homes, and assisted living facilities, where the clinical needs of the patients require their containment or restraint. Here, instead of having a sensor, the card reader is what unlocks the door from the egress side. You're actually locking the door on the egress side, but all staff have to carry the keys or credentials. This does need to unlock on fire or sprinkler system, fail safe. It needs to be capable of being unlocked remotely, only one per path to an exit, and emergency lighting at the door, UL-294 listing. We know the IBC is an exceptional code, and items one through four shall not apply to psychiatric treatment areas or nursery and obstetric areas as part of an infant abduction system. I'll get further into each one of these special locking arrangements at a future code corner. But for more information and continuing education opportunities, please visit Osablo Academy by clicking on the link in the comments below. Please click like and subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter at Art Consultant and or connect with me on LinkedIn. 
for updates. You can email code questions to katherine.flower at asabloy.com. Thanks for joining me in the Code Corner today. My name is Katie Flower, and my goal is to help you achieve safe security in the built environment.